This lesson deals with half wave rectifiers. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 9, starting on page 9. Diodes can be used to convert AC voltages, this would be the wall outlet, into DC voltages for use with radios, TVs, DVD players, laptops, smartphones, electric drills, and so on. Diodes that are used to perform this task are called rectifiers. Here's a circuit called a half wave rectifier, which has a real diode and a load and a source source being sinusoidal. Let's replace the diode with our piecewise linear model, which consists of an ideal diode and a battery VDON. You can put the ideal diode to the left or to the right of VDON. It doesn't make any difference. We're adding voltages in series. You can do them in any order. Now I'm going to do this problem symbolically. And whenever you do that, it's probably easier to assume the state of the diode and then work backwards and figure out what VN would produce it. And I find that the easier of the two states is the case when it's off. Let's solve for the voltage across the diode when it's less than or equal to zero. So this voltage is equal to V sub i minus V out minus V down. Now when this is happening, if the diode is off, there's no current flowing, so V out is equal to zero. So here's that equation. The rise in voltage equals V sub i minus V out, which is R sub L times the current of zero, minus V down. And that's less than or equal to zero when the diode's off. So solving this then, V sub i is less than V down. So whenever this is true, the output's equal to the current times r sub l, which is equal to zero. Take a look at that. I drew a line here with the value of VDN. So my input I've shown is a dotted line. It has a maximum of V sub m, actually a minimum of minus V sub m. And whenever the input is less than VDN, here's VDN, the output's equal to zero. So here's zero, here's VDN, here's zero. If D1 is off when V sub i is less than VDN, then D1 must be on when VI is greater than VDN. Because remember the diode can either be on or off. This would be the condition that's just the opposite of our off case. Now, when that's true, go back to the circuit. The ideal diode is now a short circuit, and the output voltage, rising voltage, equals the drops around the loop. So v out would be equal to minus V down, minus zero, plus V sub i. That's this equation right here. And what's this saying? Well, V sub i is a sine wave. What we're doing is we're subtracting a constant from it. So when we get up to V maximum, V out would be the V maximum minus one diode drop. It's like pushing this waveform down. Again, this only occurs when the input is greater than VDN. Effectively, what's happened is we just push the waveform down. The original waveform had an average value of zero. Now this waveform does not have an average value of zero. The definition of DC is just that, the average value of the voltage of a waveform. We're going from a zero average voltage to a non-zero. We'll later learn about capacitors and putting capacitors on a rectifier to smooth this out. We're actually going back to zero for part of a cycle. Let's see if this actually works in lab. Now suppose we build a circuit with a five volt sine wave at a frequency of 100 hertz. I can have any value of R sub L here except a short circuit. Let's estimate the voltage across the diode. If it's silicon, it's about 0.7. If that were the case, then the largest voltage that would appear here would be the peak of five volts minus 0.7. Let's see what happens with the actual data. Here I've got my sine wave of five volts on the minus five volts and so on. The period here is 10 milliseconds and one over 10 milliseconds is 100 hertz. Here's my output. And you can see it's basically the input just pushed down about 0.7 volts. The actual peak is right here. It's 4.2456. What does that mean? The peak of the input was 5 volts. Peak of the output is 4.2456. That means that the voltage across the diode is actually the difference of those two of 0.7544. Again, the actual silicon diodes have a drop somewhere around 0.7. We're going to assume that to make the analysis easier, but in reality, it's going to be in the neighborhood of 0.7. And this is an explanation of half-wave rectifiers.